2006, the face of war changed. It stopped being about bullets and became about blasts. And at that time, splashed across the press everywhere from USA Today to the thrifty nickel was the comment that traumatic brain injury was the signature injury of the war. Many people will tell you TBI and PTSD are the same thing. They're wrong. We know that in blast injury and in blunt trauma, and when you get blown up, you usually experience both, it sets off a chain of neurochemical excitatory cascades that lead to difficulties in function along numerous parameters. Those in and of themselves cause neurobehavioral changes. That is totally distinct from the issues inherent in post-traumatic stress disorder. So now we have emotional breaks that can no longer be applied in the setting of chronic pain, depression, frustration, and the severe depression inherent in your post-traumatic stress disorder, where you continuously are implementing your battle mind, feeling as though you are in combat 24-7. Take that and remove the emotional breaks that allow you to respond to it <laughs> in a socio-culturally appropriate manner, and you can see why the increased incidence of suicide in TBI and PTSD patients 13% higher than anyone else in our nation. We developed a program to screen 100% of our wounded warriors for TBI. It didn't matter if you came to us for appendicitis, a blast injury, or a gunshot wound. You were going to be screened for TBI. And we learned that depending on which units you were with, what area you were in, and what your MOS, meaning what your military job was, you had a 13 to 24 percent risk of having sustained a concussion in theater. Of that 13 to 24 percent risk, 10 percent simply failed to recover. And they go down that spiraling pathway of depression, frustration, chronic pain, insomnia, and every single coping mechanism they have is strained to its max. And when it snaps, that's when the real tragedy occurs. We are also right at the point where industry, military medicine, and academia in the form of Premier Biomedical, and all the resources that this community brings to bear, William Beaumont Army Medical Center and all of Fort Bliss, and the University of Texas at El Paso can merge <laughs> to help fight the new war, which is the war that passes across the faces of every single service member struggling with TBI and PTSD. The technology that has been developed through Mitch Felder's ideas, Beaumont's clinical expertise, and UTEP's biological laboratory acumen is that perfect confluence, just like we had at Launch School, to step in and make a difference that no one else has even realized can be made, much less must be made. Tumor necrosis factor alpha, alpha. interleukin-6, fascinating. Watson and Crick, you've heard of them. They got the Nobel for identifying DNA. And as a team, they said years later, we harnessed the power of the genome. And in doing that, we learned something, and that was that the person who could leash the interferons would control cancer. Our initial experiments have shown that we can do just that. What we did was we very simply took a test tube, loaded it with those exact same neurotransmitters, and then removed them. 
very selectively. And by reaching into a test tube, and in the next few weeks into cerebrospinal fluid, and removing those exact same neurotransmitters specifically, sensitively, and to the point where less than picomoles of this material remain, meaning essentially none, we can now remove the key factor that potentiates the pathology of that downward spiral we just discussed. Our soldiers deserve our best. When I saw what Mitch's work could do, I realized this was the best, and this is what they deserve, and that's why I'm committed. And it's why that perfect confluence of this community with educational, academic, institutional, and military prowess can join to make the difference that our soldiers deserve. I'm looking forward to being a part of that. Thank you. Thank you very much.